tonight. New rules for swimming in the Charles? Now you can do more than just dip your toe in. Find out if our own Edgar B. Herwick takes the plunge. And we do really need a new bridge. Forget troubled waters. Now it's our bridges that are troubled. Plus, a local journal that promises to blunt the cutting edge. Why the baffler is the talk of the town. That's now on Greater Boston. Good evening. It used to be so polluted that it was considered beyond salvation. But now, after decades of cleanup, the Charles River is open for swimming, kind of. You are supposed to have a permit to swim, and certain sections are still off limits. Nevertheless, there were people willing to take the plunge over the weekend. So we asked our own Edgar B. Herwick if he'd be willing to do it. On Saturday, a few dozen brave souls leapt off a dock along the Esplanade and into the Charles River. This marked the first public swim in that famous dirty water in more than 50 years. The reason for the ban was simple, pollution. Now that officials have deemed the Charles River swim ready, one big question remains. Are people actually ready to swim in the Charles? Did you hear the news that this weekend they had the first public swim in 50 years in the Charles River? Uh, I did. Dave Bosch of Boston says he's always up for a swim in the river. Have you ever been in the Charles River? I have. You're not worried about it being dirty, disgusting, gross? No, I heard that they really did a good job cleaning it up, and I'm not too worried about it. Michael Milburn of Newton is all for it, too. I think it's great. I think it's long overdue. It's pretty hot out today. You thinking about going in? Oh, uh, no, not right now. <laughs> I have to go do some painting. Others we spoke with expressed a little more hesitation. Nadine Raymond says she swam in the Charles 40 years ago, but today, it's a different story. It was fairly clean back then, I guess. Would you go in now? You think it's clean enough? No. Eric Grazer often comes to the Charles on his lunch hour, but going in the Charles? No thanks. What you're telling me is that you don't love that dirty water. I, I love the dirty water, but typically just for Fenway purposes and not for actually jumping in myself. Others have been ignoring the rules for years. How's the water? Is it warm? Down at the community boating house, instructor Vanessa Colesworthy tells us her students end up in the water all the time. And while she says it's not polluted, they often find some surprises at the bottom of the river. Skittles, water bottles, um, boat parts, old shoes, hats. I think there's a bicycle down there. All right, you guys, I got to be honest with you. It is more than 90 degrees out here. We've been here for more than two hours. I don't care how dirty it is or isn't. I got to get into that water. Woo! All right, it is deeper and warmer than I expected it to be. So much so, I got to go back in. Woo! There is one caveat, though. The new rules require that you get a permit before taking the plunge yourself. But believe me, on a hot day like today, going through the trouble to do so is well worth it. And Edgar B. Herwick III is alive and well right here, along with Franz Levetz, president of the Charles River Swimming Club, and Robert Zimmerman of the Charles River Watershed Shed Association. So you didn't get your permit, did you, Edgar? <laughs> uh, no comment on whether or not we had a permit. I'll just say that I ended up in the water. So it's still dirty, brackish, whatever that Yeah, is. I mean, it's it like... is. It's, you know, when I jumped in, you, I would guess it at about 10 feet, right? And so I go in, and, and I definitely touched bottom. And you could feel it's pretty muddy at the bottom, not unlike if you were, say, in Walden Pond, or sometimes even if you're up in Maine on the bay side of, of the water there, it can kind of be muddy and deep on the bottom. That's sort of what it felt like. You know, it's not exactly what you would say the most crystal clean water, but, you know, I certainly didn't feel like it was so dirty. It didn't smell necessarily that bad. Was it refreshing? It was definitely refreshing. Okay. I mean, it felt like it felt really exhilarating to jump in there, especially to sort of take a moment and you're in the water and you look up and you see the city. There's just something about being in a river in the middle of a city that is pretty special. All right, so Franz, I take it you've done this a few times yourself. Yeah, actually probably going back at least 10 years. I've windsurfed out of community boating um, as long as I've been in Boston, and uh, you don't windsurf without falling in. And what other sports have you done in the, in the, in the Oh, world? pretty much everything that's available, kayaking, rowing, sailing. But have you intentionally gone for a swim? Well, after eight years of organizing the uh, swimming race, I finally got to participate in it this year, so I swam a mile about a month ago. Um, and uh, it was a fairly choppy day, so I ended up probably drinking a few ounces of the Charles yeah, okay. while I was at it. <laughs> How did it taste? Uh, okay, I suppose. 
and you didn't get sick or anything? No, no. Yeah. So, Bob, I mean, this is really is. I can remember back when I was news director at Channel 5, we took a canoe and went down the Charles. I mean, there was everything there. Yeah. I mean, refrigerators, lawnmower, everything under the sun was in the river. It was a dumping ground. And for people who lived in neighborhoods all up and down the river, it wasn't necessarily people just coming along. And I mean, everybody did it. So this has been a long time coming. Yeah, CRWA has been at this since 1965 when the river literally ran in colors, uh, depending on what paint was being ma manufactured that day. There were abattoirs and, you know, uh, uh, slaughterhouses for oh, yeah, animal, yeah. and all the body parts went in. Oh. Uh, so we've come a long way, uh, a very long way. We have a ways yet to go. Uh, uh, as Edgar said, the sediments are still pretty bad. Uh, and yet we have a lot to celebrate. We're considered by EPA the cleanest urban river in the United States. Uh, tomorrow there's going to be um, uh, fish being uh, fry, fish fry, American shad being introduced to the river. They're anadromous, so they're uh, an old species been around for a long, long time that we haven't had in the river uh, except uh, beginning seven years ago, we started to reintroduce them, and they're coming back to the river. Well, so, so we've got a lot to celebrate. Are, are people actually fishing in the river and eating the fish that they pull out? Absolutely. So one of the things I was reading about today, and I actually didn't know about this, that, that the phosphorus that's in this river is coming from these massive parking lots uh, all up and down. So the, the, the gas and oil that makes up the tar leaches into the river. What happens, uh, we did a study beginning in 2000, 2001. Uh, phosphorus is uh, a nutrient. You get it in fertilizer. And had you asked me back then, you know, where it came from, I would have told you fertilizer. It turns out that 50% of the phosphorus load in the river, which already has more than twice as much as it can handle, uh, comes from parking lots because phosphorus is a component in the refinement of gasoline and when we fire up our cars we paint the parking lot with phosphorus and that all runs off to storm uh, drains and directly to the river. So we're, we've been working with EPA and the state on um, coming up with solutions to that, green infrastructure and the like, to capture that uh, runoff before it gets to the river, treat it and get it to go back into the ground, in effect mimicking nature. You know, one of the things I noticed in your piece, Edgar, is that the older people were less likely to feel confident about going mm -hmm. into the river versus the younger ones because they, they don't remember the way we all. I mean, yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think that the, the reputation for years of the Charles, I, I think it was sometime uh, during the late 80s, early 90s when it hit rock bottom, right, where it got that D rating from the EPA. So people who were aware of it then, I think it sort of solidified in their minds as like this river is dangerously dirty because it was. And so people who are older, I think, remember that. And when you say, are you going to swim in the Charles? They say, absolutely not. It's the disgusting in there. But, you know, as we've learned over time, it's gotten much, much cleaner and it's, it's much safer now um, than certainly than it was in the 80s and 90s and maybe than it was even 50 years ago. So it's, you know, we're getting there. As, as we've heard, we're getting there and hopefully continue to get there. Because like I said, when you actually jump in there and swim, if more people could do that, uh, I think more people would take an interest in this topic mm. because it's pretty special to be the thought of being able to swim in the river in the middle of a city. Very cool. Franz, I'm curious, um, one of the things that you're advised not to do is touch bottom or stir the sediment because that's got metals and all kinds of stuff in it that's frankly never going to disappear. So do you avoid doing that? Or do you yeah. stand? Um, no, no, you definitely want to avoid contact with the sediment. So for the race and for the community swim that took place, uh, we had dock ladders attached. So there was really no chance of anybody actually coming into contact with the sediment. So you couldn't stand. So. If you dove in, once you were swimming, you, there was no place to stand. Exactly. And how deep was it? It's there? about 14 feet. Uh, and then, and then they would just come straight back to. The, That's right. Who won the yeah. race? Did you? No, no. Actually, um, I'm really <laughs> not much of a uh, competitive swimmer, even though I'm president of the club and um, help out with organizing the race. But uh, as was just mentioned, you know, bringing people back to the river to me is something. It's really significant that. That is long overdue. Uh, we have this sort of stereotype that because you live in a big city, everything around it is polluted, and I think it's important that we change that perception. Yeah, I actually just stumbled into it. I was bike riding uh, over the weekend, and I, I suddenly came across all these swimmers there off the dock. I, oh, I said, thought you, you fell into the river. No. You stumbled <laughs> into the river off your bike. <laughs> no, I was riding a bike that was way too big for me. That could have happened. Uh, so how do you get it even cleaner? Is it, It's never going to be... 
Actually, we have plans to fully restore this river. We believe it can be done. We're working on, on uh, all kinds of fronts with studies and with the state and EPA, uh, demonstration projects and the like. I believe that there is a very good chance that this river can come all the way back. It's come so far. Um, we're down to the last 20, 30 percent. The river meets swimming standards in the lower basin 60 to 70 percent of the time every year. Uh, and to get from there to 100 percent means we've got to deal with stormwater. We're going to have to figure out some sort of way to address the sediment issue. There's, you know, 300 years of bad stuff on the bottom of the river. That, uh, but we don't necessarily have to do it the way everybody used to do it, go out and dredge it all, mm. that sort of thing. There are lots of interesting uh, methods of approaching these kinds of problems. Uh, into the future. So I'm hopeful, you know, in the space of the next 10 years, you'll see the river all the way back. I hate to even bring this up, but what about the geese? Are they a problem? Well, the geese are a bit of a problem. You know, they, um, uh, they poop a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They're an issue. Uh, I think, you know, the big thing there is to keep them away from beaches. If we open be beaches back up, they're going to have to have their place and people will have uh, their swimming beaches. Right now, the geese think that the river is there. So, so Franz, do you think they should have lifeguards at some point? I mean, how should they regulate this? Well, yes. I mean, if you are going to open up a, an actual sanctioned swimming spot, then, of course, you would need all the same precautions that you have at beaches and Walden Pond and other places. Um, that's really a discussion that the state would have to have as to uh, how they want people to go back in the water. Is it going to be at large, or is it going to be something that's controlled? I noticed there was none over the weekend, but then, or, or we were out there today. Right? <laughs> That's right. Perfect. Thanks so much, Franz Levetz and Bob Zimmerman. Thank you so much. You're welcome.